Yes, her femininity is great, and this is a this is a woman who has gotten ahead not by being married to somebody who was well known, and uh, and not by somebody dying in office and handing it off to her that way, but rather she has done it all on her own. Every step of the way, she has uh, stepped up the political ladder, and uh, I think that appeals to a lot of feminists. It appeals to a lot of women. Uh, but but leaving the women thing aside, she is a reformer. That was the brilliant part of this. McCain was able to trans to to feed into the best thing about McCain in this year, 2008, is that he is not the typical Washington spend, corrupt, you know, uh, you know feather your own nest kind of politician. And w by picking her, he was able to draw attention to that aspect of himself, and together. You know, the sum was greater than the, uh, the, 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 the whole, is greater than the sum of the two parts. But what has she reformed? If you read the New York Times this morning, once elected, Palin hired friends and lashed at foes. And also, even... Well, that's the New York Times, so but it's e but even, suspect right away. E even, uh, <laughs> by all accounts, she was for the bridge to nowhere before she was against it. Yes, well, that was the one instance she did run, saying that she supported it, and then once she got into office, she realized that it was a bad idea. She changed her mind on that. And, and people, yet still took the federal dollars. She took the federal dollars, but not for the bridge to nowhere, for, for other uh, infrastructure projects. Um, look, you know, she did institute ethics reform. She did take on... The, uh, her own party, which uh, Barack Obama never has done, um, de uh, and Joe Biden never has done, um, on corruption. Um, and uh, I lost my train of thought. Well, the, the one part about the New York Times, and this is, uh, again, um, a fact, but you can argue with the way that it's portrayed, that Francie, uh, I believe it's Havemeister, was appointed to a $95,000 a year job as the directorship of the Alaska State Division of Agriculture. She's a former real estate agent. She's a classmate of Sarah Palin and cited her childhood love of cows as a qualification for running the roughly $2 million a year okay, agency. We, we will find out more about this. This is just the New York Times foray, okay? We will find out more from her and from her supporters later on today, judging by how fast the news cycle is these days. Um, but look, there is nobody ever who has ever held political office who was pure 100 percent of the time Ronald Reagan you know swore he wasn't going to raise taxes and you know he said my feet are in cement on this famously he then changed his mind and they said he said that sound you hear is the sound of cement cracking it happens in every administration she actually maybe to the disappointment of some far-right conservatives um, has been pragmatic about getting done what she could get done in order to get the gas pipeline deal done um, she declined the um, uh, pleas of abortion opponents to tack on to that bill anti-abortion uh, um, uh, features, and uh, she said no. This was that that would have distracted from the from the pur uh, purpose of the bill, which is to do the gas pipeline. Um, so she has a pragmatic way of governing. Let's take a call, and we'll come back and get your reaction. Uh, Port here on Michigan. Good morning. Good morning. I've waited 20 minutes, so I hope you'll give me. Uh uh, some ample time. Certainly. Uh, Mona Charon is basically uh, a um, right-wing surrogate and propagandist uh, in the mold of Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity. She's, there's no delicate way to put it. She's a liar. Jane, you're doing a great job. You stay on the issues, and she'll come back to abortion again eventually. Uh, but let's keep this on the up and up. We're talking about a PTA mom who's uh, going to be sitting across from Vladimir Putin, a KGB hardened veteran. If that's what you want, America, great. We're talking about uh, John McCain. How is he a reformer and a maverick when his economic advisor, his chief economic advisor, Mona, is Phil Graham? Phil Graham is responsible for ramrodding the legislation for deregulation for the banking industries to give us the subprime mortgage. But you guys want us to think about old Sarah Palin, the uh, lipstick-wearing pit bull soccer mom uh, who's basically been the governor of a state with more dogs in it than people. Uh, her claim to fame is the Iditarod. You just called her a reformer. She's no reformer. She asked for $200 million in pork barrel just this year alone. And, and John McCain put into an ad that she's a reformer, that he's a maverick. Yeah, they're mavericks, just like the 1970s TV gambler, the Riverboat Gambler Maverick. That's about as much reform and maverickism as they're going to have. And, Steve, you asked earlier about 
faith in the markets. My faith in the market is gone. I put money into Kmart stock when Kmart was strong. Kmart went bankrupt, belly up, then came back three weeks later uh, and bought Sears. And they didn't have to pay me a dime of my money, my money that I lost. How much did you lose? What's that? How much did you lose? I lost about $10,000, and that's a lot of money for me, because sure. I'm just a working class there who believed in the markets, who put my money in the faith in the American people and the American way of doing business. And this is what they do. We have socialized corporate welfare, but then you want to go after the little uh, Cadillac welfare mom. Okay. So my I'm sorry. Thank you very much for the call. I'm going to, as promised, go to Jane Hampshire first. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll take issue with two things. One, I do think Mona is, is uh, arguing in good faith. Um, and two, I think that uh, Sarah Palin is every bit as much of a reformer as John McCain is. He's got lobbyists running his campaign out of the back of his bus, and she's someone who uh, is, is, you know, as, as the New York Times said today uh, in appointing this agriculture director, it um, just does this as a matter of habit. She fired the librarian for refusing to uh, ban books. She fired the chief of police in Which her... Which she has denied. Huh? All right. But the he's... librarian was not fired. All right. But he sued her, actually, saying that uh, she did fire him, and her defense was, and she won, that she could do it for any reason. Um, she also, you know, was involved in Troopergate, having her brother-in-law dismissed for, you know, for personal reasons. So she's, her abuses of power are rather notorious. And uh, I think that uh, she and John McCain are uh, both uh, faux mavericks faux reformers, uh, it's a better uh, a sound bite than it is actually grounded in reality. But one of the points about the so-called Troopergate is that uh, she claims that her ex-brother-in-law had tasered his stepson and that he was a threat to the to the Palin family as the governor. So Then at that point, she should be recusing herself from the situation completely. And if the facts indicate that that, should be take, that, that action should be taken, then others can take it. I mean, I, I think that the idea of firewalling yourself from these things when you're personally involved is just a matter of principle, of leadership. And she does, that doesn't seem to be anything that she's aware of. It's very much the way George Bush has run the country for the past eight years. And I think that's of concern. Rip on California uh, is next. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Um, your uh, young lady there on the uh, evidently Republican side, uh, is her name uh, Mona Charon? It's Mona Charon. Aren't you, aren't you both glad you came up so early on a Sunday <laughs> Hey, morning? look, he just called me young. He can say whatever else he wants. I don't care. <laughs> good morning. And, um, your plurality uh, question about um, the... Uh, you know, how many people believe in, how many women believe in Roe versus Wade? What does plurality constitute in your view? When there are three groups of, uh, uh, out of a hundred, if there are three groups, the largest of those three is the plurality. It would be? Plurality. The total percentage of the population of those groups would entail 69% total? Because that's a percentage of women who believe in Roe versus Wade. Yeah, well, let's not, if you don't mind, let's not go over this again and again. There's so many other issues. Um, I, I would, my, if you want to look it up, look, go, go to some of the websites that, that deal with, uh, with polling on the abortion question and, and you, you'll get enlightenment there. But uh, I, I just want to respond to a couple of things that Jane said. Uh, you know, I think, I think you're being very fast and loose. By the way, thank you for saying I'm arguing in good faith. I think you are too. But um, I think you're playing very fast and loose with the facts about her governorship. Um, the Troopergate thing, for example, um, she didn't fire anybody. She simply did when, they, when she came into office and was asked, are there any threats against you? She said yes. And ironically enough, he's a trooper who has threatened, he had threatened to kill her father. He had tasered his stepson. Uh, he was in a nasty divorce with her sister. Um, that is highly relevant and not something she could possibly recuse herself from. She was too intimately involved, but she didn't fire him and she didn't pressure him. You can, you, you can recuse fired. yourself, but more than that, she, now she's not cooperating with the investigation, much like George Bush is. So, you know, there's all kinds of echoes of the past eight years that are going to make the American people uncomfortable, and it happens in her history over and over again. Steve Hayward in the uh, Weekly Standard, it's not just that she didn't go to Harvard, she's never been on Meet the Press, she hasn't participated in the Aspen Institute seminars or attended the World Economic Forum. She hasn't even brought into the slipstream of the establishment by which we unofficially certify our highest, highest leaders. The issue is not whether the establishment would let such a person as Palin cross the bar into the certified political class, 
but whether regular citizens of this republic have the skill and the ability to control the levers of government without having first joined the certified political class. They're trying to make the class argument, and they've been trying to make the class argument all along against Barack Obama. I, I, I find it one of the most miraculous shorthands of, of sleight of hands of this particular election that a guy who was the a mother, you know, child of a single mother who grew up poor, lived the American dream, Horatio Alger, got his way to Harvard, is being cast as an elitist. And, and somehow John Sidney McCain III, son of Admiral who's, who had every advantage, uh, you know, is, is the everyday guy. And so the argument continues with Sarah Palin, but it's, it's patently false. 